What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video we're talking about rooms in Revit. So when it comes to creating rooms in Revit it can be really straightforward and easy but as anything else in Revit there are a lot of little things that you can kind of mess up along the way, a lot of important settings and additional tools that you probably didn't know about. So in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the workflow when it comes to creating rooms in Revit and all of the little advanced techniques and so on that are important important really to know when it comes to creating rooms in Revit and that are going to make your life a little bit easier when it comes to working in Revit. Now before I get into that tutorial I would just like to ask you to like this video it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to subscribe I make useful Revit tutorials each week I make multiple tutorials each week and also I make some beginner intermediate as well as advanced level uh, courses for Revit. All of those are available on my website balkanarctic.com. That's the first link in the description just below the video. I've got over 90 hours of video content there. Also if you would like to access my Revit project files those are on my Patreon page. That's the second link just below the video. So check that out as well if you're interested. Okay so without any further ado let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So uh, as you can see, this is the, the 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 floor plan that I'm going to be using for this demonstration. It's just a simple kind of a beginner project for a uh, house, and uh, let's use this in order to create or to, to to show how to create rooms in Revit. So in order to place rooms, uh, what you have to do is go be on the architecture tab and then here we have the room and area panel and on that panel we have some tools for placing rooms and areas. Uh, now for this video we're going to be concentrating just on rooms and to place a simple room you just go here to the room tool, RM is the shortcut, you hover over one of your rooms in the floor plan and as you can see it's going to highlight with this kind of a blue uh, outline and it's going to show you where the boundary of that room is going to be and if you just click it's going to place a room there. Uh, now in this case we have uh, a bit of a complicated pro uh, situation here because uh, pretty much we only have one room. Now if I just hit the escape key a couple of times this room is of course going to be divided into a kitchen here, here we're going to have some type of an entrance and also we can divide this area and call this maybe dining. So the living room will only be this part. Uh, so what do you do in that case? Well uh, if I just hover over kind of near the room you're going to see that we have kind of this like an X going over the entire room and then when we select that it's going to say here in the properties rooms and we have selected the uh, only room that we have created. Uh, now here it's going to the, uh, display or report the area of the room under dimensions, the perimeter and so on and here we have the room number and the room name. So we can just call this one the living room just like that, click apply and let's see, oops, okay so you have to hit enter when uh, inserting this here. Uh, now of course you can select the room tag, so when you select this, this isn't the room, this is just the room tag and you can then move that around like this and you can room, uh, move the room position like this, but it doesn't really matter where it is, it only matters that it's within the room and I just want to move it here in this area because this is what I want to be the living room. Okay, so what do we do in this situation where we have uh, this uh, dining area for example and this kitchen area and this entrance? Well, in that case we can use the room separator tool. Now what the room separator does is, well it does exactly how it sounds, it separates a room. So you can select that zoom in over here, come to the wall for example, go all the way to the other side and then this is going to act as sort of a separation between rooms. Now if I hit the escape key a couple of times and now if I want to select this room, as you can see it's going to stop over here, it's not going to kind of flood over into the entrance area. Now when it comes to room separation, something that you'll also notice is that these kitchen elements, it looks like the room stops at the kitchen elements. It goes over all of this other furniture, it goes over the stair, but for the kitchen elements it's the, it kind of 
uh, goes around. Now, the only reason for that is what they tend to do in the initial phases of design. I like to use thick walls as kitchen elements just so I can quickly play around with the kitchen design. But in this case, it's kind of uh, uh, it's affecting my rooms because it's uh, basically acting like a wall and it's subtracting that from the actual area of the room. And I don't want that. So if I just hover over the room and select it right now, uh, you're going to see that here it's going to report the area of uh, 58.65 uh, square meters. Now, if I select all of these walls by holding the control key, selecting all three of them, uh, here in the wall in the properties panel, if I scroll down, we have the room bounding effect and it's tr currently turned on. So this basically means that does this uh, wall uh, define a room boundary or not. So if we uncheck that, it's no longer going to define room boundary. And now if we select this room, as you can see, the whole room will flow over this wall, which is exactly what we want. And also here we can see that the area has increased by mm, almost five square meters, which is quite a lot. Uh, so now we can just play around with playing with the uh, room bounding uh, properties of walls, which we have over here, or using these room separators in order to kind of separate out the space. So I want this to go up to there, perhaps up to here. There we go. So now if I select this, there we go. So this is now separate. And now I can go back here to the room tool, add a room here add a room here and perhaps even here for this bathroom. Hit the escape key a couple of times, there we go. Uh, now, of course, you can rename your rooms by selecting this tag and then clicking here in the name and then we can call this one kitchen. And this one can be the entrance. And this one can be water closet. Now, when it comes to placing these rooms, you can see that each room will be assigned a number. Now, you can change that number at any point by just clicking on that and typing in maybe five and so on. Now, a problem that might occur is if you decide to delete the rooms. So uh, let's say here that I don't want this room. Now, you don't want to delete just the room tag. You want to delete the actual room like that. And here you want to zoom in Gonna find this room. Let's see, where is it? There we go, delete that one. Now you can also use the tab key here if you can select it, delete this one, delete this one. And now we have deleted all of the rooms, but if we decide to go here to room and place this, this is now going to be room number six, which is usually not what you want. You want to start off with room number one. So it's already counting some six rooms, which, which we don't really see. Well, let me show you what you want to do in this particular situation. Let's delete this for now. So what you want to do is create a room schedule, which is going to show you, do you have any rooms that haven't been placed? So for the room schedule, uh, what you have to do is go here to the project browser, scroll down a little bit, find schedules and quantities, right click and go to new schedule. And let's search for a room schedule. Here we go, rooms, click OK. And then here we can add an area, perhaps uh, we can add a name of the room. And let's just add a number as well. Let's see. Okay, here we go number. And I'm just going to uh, move the number up here and then the name and then finally the area. Okay, so once we have created the schedule and click OK, it's going to create that schedule. And as you can see, we have five or six rooms, which we don't really have. They're not placed as you can see. So what you want to do is uh, select these and then go into delete. And that's going to delete all of these. So you can select all of them by just clicking on one and dragging down. Let's see, like this, and then go delete and it's going to delete all of these rooms. So now when you go back into level one and go to room and go to place it, and it's going to show seven again, uh, but don't worry about it here. If you just change the number back to one and hit enter, now when you want to place the second room, it's going to be room number two and so on. So uh, this is just something to keep in mind when it comes to creating these rooms and placing them. Uh, it's, it's going to be a bit difficult at first just to get the hang of it. But uh, once you do, everything is going to be easy. So let's change here this to kitchen. And this is the living room. 
Okay, so once we have all of these room pl uh, rooms placed, maybe we can add another one here for the dining room. So let's add a room separator like this. Hit the escape key a couple of times and then we can place a room here as well. And then we can rename this into dining. Perfect. Okay, so once we have placed all of these rooms, uh, this room separator, uh, you might find it annoying. So what they like to do is just select all of the room separators uh, like this and then just go here to hide in view and just hide those elements. I think the full floor plan is going to look a bit more elegant and then still if you select the rooms, it's going to uh, display uh, like that. So we still uh, have the ability to see all of the rooms. Uh, now, moving forward, uh, something that uh, I find particularly annoying by these rooms is the fact that the number is in this huge uh, rectangle uh, there, which I find extremely annoying. And also, I find the, the, the text size, uh, the size of all of the, the, the labels, I find it way too large. So what I tend to do is I tend to change this. So for example, in my templates that you can find on my website, balkanarctic.com, uh, it's going to be the third link in the description. Uh, there I change the actual room tag for the template because I, I find this one to be very annoying. So let me show you how you can change your own in order to make it a bit more elegant. So you can select the room tag, so just the room tag, not the actual room, but the room tag. Go here into edit family and then it's on, as soon as that opens up, it's going to display like this. Uh, so here we can see uh, the labels. We have three labels, the room name, the room number, and then here, as you can see, it's, it can display either volume or the area, which is perfectly fine, but we still don't see that ugly rectangle. Now, in order to see that ugly rectangle and have the uh, option to delete it or change it, what you have to do is just type in VG for visibility graphics. And then here, if I select the annotation categories, as you can see, they're turned off. So if I just turn that back on and hit apply, now we can see the rectangle as well as these reference lines, which is perfect. So now you can select that thing and you can either delete it or you can change it in any way. Uh, now, I, I personally tend to uh, either delete it or I like to make it smaller sometimes because I think it's way too large. Now, I'm making it kind of really small because I'm actually going to change the labels as well. So here we have this three millimeter label, which is used for everything. And I prefer all of my text on my uh, projects to be two millimeters. So I'm just going to go here into edit type and change this down to two millimeters. And let's rename it then to two millimeters. Hit apply. Okay. And I think it looks a lot nicer now. And also we can still make this a bit smaller. Now, if your uh, room numbers will not have more than three digits, which is common on a smaller projects, you're probably not going to have a hundred rooms, then this is okay. And then let's bring this down a bit. Oops, bring this up a bit. I'm just going to use the arrow keys just like that. And I think that now we have a much nicer room tag. So if I just load this into the project and close it, I'm not going to save the changes because I don't want to save the original. Here we can override this and as you can see it's much smaller, especially in smaller rooms such as this uh, water closet here, it's going to be a lot better, especially when we add all of the fixtures, this is probably not going to be visible at all. Okay, so there we go. Now we have uh, a created a bit nicer room tags. And as I said, we have that option to display the area or the volume of the room. Uh, so if I go here into edit type, when I select this tag, so you select the tag, go into edit type, we have the option to show area or show volume. I like to turn on show area and hit apply. And now as you can see, it's going to display that as well, which is really, really nice. Okay, uh, moving forward, uh, let's uh, pl uh, just uh, check out one more feature. Uh, and that is if I just go here to, uh, uh, to architecture, and then let's actually go to annotate. And there on the annotate option, we have the color fill legend. Now for the color fill legend, you can place it here just like that. And then here you can set it to be rooms. And then here it can change rooms by name. 
And then when you click OK, it's going to basically make a small calculation and it's going to color all of your rooms just like this. So it's a really nice way of representing all of the rooms. And of course, at any point, you can select this and then go here into Edit Scheme and then you can play around with all of the colors. Now, uh, personally, I don't like this. I think it looks a bit ugly. Uh, uh, it might be nice for a small kind of legend view in a corner of a floor plan, but like this, I, I think this is a bad way of presenting uh, rooms in Revit. So if you want to have some sort of a legend like this, uh, what I prefer to do is just delete this and then use the schedule that we have created. So let's go here to the project browser find that schedule that we have, schedule quantities, room schedule, and okay, we can't include it here, of course, but we if we create a sheet, so let's go to sheets, right click, new sheet, A1 metric, that's okay. And then if we select this floor plan, uh, let's just give it a quick cropped view. So just crop it like that. And I also like to uncheck crop region visible when I'm done editing the crop region. And let's go now to that sheet, find that level one floor plan, drag it over, perfect. And then the room schedule. And I like to just have that here, maybe make it a bit smaller. There we go. I, I prefer having something that looks like this and then we can go back here and uh, we can just uh, get rid of this uh, color scheme. And uh, we do that uh, simply, uh, we can't really just select it and delete it. Uh, what we have to do is go here to the entity tab and actually bring back this color fill legend. We have to select it and go into edit scheme and just check none and hit apply. Okay, so now it's going to get rid of all of the color and we can just get rid of this. And also you don't really have to display the name as well. So if I go here into edit type, I can uh, just display the number, for example, click apply. Okay. And then uh, I can go into edit family and get rid of the name like that, load it back into the project, override, there we go. So now when we take a look at the sheet, it's going to look just like this. So you simply just have numbers here uh, in each area. This is actually a trick that I have seen on the uh, Aussie BIM Guru channel. It's a really good tip here where you just have the number. I think it's really elegant. Uh, and then of course here we have the display of each uh, room. Uh, I think this is really nice, especially if you have maybe some sort of a client presentation and you have like a elegant floor plan. I think this would be an elegant way of rep representing that. And one more tip here for the outside areas, because you sometimes do have to include them into the whole area and so on. Uh, if you were to go to architecture and go to rooms to place a room, as you can see, it's not going to allow you to place it. And it's definitely not going to calculate the area. So what you want to do is use the room separator and just follow the whole outline like this. Luckily here we have a wall. And then when you go to place a room, it's going to be placed like that. So I can place a room there and then I can go to the room schedule and just say that the room six is the terrace. There we go. And now if I go here to the sheet, we have the terrace as uh, number six. I kind of missed the, the E here. Perfect. So there we go. Uh, that's how you can create outside rooms. Okay, so that concludes uh, my list of uh, advanced uh, room tips and techniques for uh, for uh, creating rooms in Revit. And if you have any suggestions, maybe what you like to do, uh, what's your approach, uh, maybe something that you figured out that you think it's uh, kind of nice, it's uh, it's uh, an effective way of representing rooms, uh, please tell me in the comment section below. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this uh, quick little tutorial. If you're interested in more advanced uh, or longer content, I have both beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced level courses on my website, balkanarctic.com. There also you can find my templates for Revit. And if you're looking for all of my Revit project files, like this project that we have over here, uh, that is available on my Patreon page. That's the second link in the description. Okay, thank you for watching, and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. 
Have a nice day.